Hi, welcome back to this video on Hiasis. Uh, so basically in the last video, we have actually completed the recycle stream for our reactor system. And now we've got to iron out some of the details uh, within this uh, simulation. Now, not everything that was being achieved was, strictly speaking, correct. Uh, one, one of the examples uh, will be, let's say, well, yeah, you have this, uh, you have this uh, reactor having, you know, using five, num uh, five number of segments to try and converge this uh, simulation. So that enabled us to, you know, converge a lot faster. If not, uh, we'll have to take several, maybe an hour, more than an hour to actually converge the reactor system. So we need to, fi uh, we'll need to increase the number of segments back to 50, back to where we were. And we need to understand also the significance of increasing this number of segments. Okay, so we know that uh, in numerical in integration, the, the more segments there are, the smaller the step size. And the smaller the step size, the more accurate the integration. And yeah, so we need to get it back to 50 to really reflect the uh, conditions of a plug flow reactor. However, uh, we should also know this. Um, a plug flow reactor can be approximated by a very long series of CSTRs and if we have many many small CSTRs in series, we will approximate a plug flow reactor very well, meaning there's very little back mixing. If we use less CSTRs, let's say maybe 10 in series to uh, simulate a plug flow reactor, there will be this uh, so-called back mixing phenomenon, there will be more back mixing and the efficiency kind of drops. So this is from uh, reaction engineering, some of the uh, knowledge we kept. Um, yeah, so that, that's what we need to know. So increasing this back to 50 kind of reflects our previous simulation, but do we have to increase it all the way? May not be necessary because uh, we can leave it as uh, you know 20, to, uh, 20 segments to simulate some of the back mixing that occurs. So uh, we, can, we can leave it as 20, so let's just leave it as 20 for now. So we'll uh, let it converge again, and we can see that uh, after one or two iterations, it already converges because you know it's very this uh, five segments integration was very close to the actual convergence point. And now um, the other thing we want to uh, note, uh, strict uh, to be more correct, well we we saw that uh, we don't we don't have a pipe. Uh, pipe system in our recycle stream. Now, strictly speaking, uh, everything is connected by pipes, and everything will, you know, have some sort of pressure drop. So, we want to include pipes in our system. So, let's just include a pipe. So, I'm going to break this uh, connection. If not, when I, I'm going to break this reactor feed connection to the reactor to prevent, you know, uh, prevent Heisei from doing unnecessary calculations. Because if I do that. If I don't do that and I break this uh, stream here in a gas recycle, then HiSys will start uh, trying to calculate uh, the steady state based on these two fresh feeds alone. Basically, you'll run unnecessary calculations that we don't want to have. So uh, now that we have done this, we just break this uh, connection here and let's uh, put a pipe in place. I mean, uh, not all simulations will require pipes. But just for the sake of demonstration, we want to include pipes. So where's the pipe function? Uh, we can take a look. It should look something like the plug flow reactor. So this is the pipe segment. Okay. So I'll just call it the recycle pipe. Uh, so this should uh, estimate you know, the pressure drop and the heat loss. So I'm going to put uh, use this as uh, 3. I'm going to press 3 so to so as to invert it around. So I'll just put gas RCY after pipe. So this will help to estimate the pressure drop. And I'm going to assume, let's say, uh, 100 meters of piping. So let's take a look. I'm going to append a segment. And let's put 100 meters. It can be more or less. So. I'm going to put it as the same kind of material as the pipe previously mentioned uh, in the previous video. So 250 and 200. 
so it doesn't have to be uh, again it doesn't have to be this much but um, we just want to use this as an estimate if you have a, a more real figure you should be using that uh, a figure based on you know uh, based on real world, uh, industrial specs so that should be the more accurate one but for now we'll just use an estimate so I'm gonna have an ambient temperature of about okay this should be 32 I'm just assuming 32 ambient air temperature of 32 heat transfer coefficient 180 and let's give it an energy stream so heat loss from recycle pipe okay so let's uh, check out the pressure drop there's about 24 kilopascals of pressure drop so here will be 7733 so let's connect this back to our mixer and we see that uh, there's some heat loss it drops to around 48.51 degrees C so it's not actually that big but that's fine uh, we'll need to connect this to the reactor feed and we notice at this mixing point that this 7733 right this uh, pressure is lower than this CO2 fresh feed right. it's lower than this CO2 fresh feed so this CO2 fresh feed is at 7805 kilopascals and a high and flows usually go from high to low uh, pressure high pressure to low pressure so this CO2 fresh feed can go to this mixer and c potentially cause backflow in this recycle stream because this recycle stream is at a lower pressure so I'm going to have to, you know, equalize these two pressures to these three pressures, in fact, to ensure that there's no backflow. And the other thing about recycle stream is that uh, the pressures will keep changing, so we cannot keep manually adjusting this uh, pressure of the CO two and the pressure of the H two fresh feed. So what can we do to uh, adjust this uh, this pressure to ensure that uh, this CO two uh, fresh feed pressure is going to equal this gas RCY feed, uh, gas RCY uh, recycle. Now we can use this uh, set function. So basically, what this set function does is to uh, take some of the parameters from this gas RCY or whatever stream we want to specify. So let's say pressure. It takes the pressure of the gas RCY stream and sets it equal to this uh, CO2 fresh feed stream. Or you can do it the other way around. So if this is fixed at 7733 kilopascals, this can be set at 7733 kilopascals using this set function. So now I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So uh, in this uh, set operation, it has some target variable. So you can select the object. Okay, you can select the object and go to gas RCY after the pipe. And we look for the pressure and just press OK. So that's the target variable. OK, sorry, the target variable should be what you want to set. So let's select CO2 fresh feed and we look at the pressure. Look at the pressure, press OK. So that's the correct one we want to set. And where do we get the pressure data from? We get it from this gas RCY after pipe. So gas RCY after pipe. So again, we have a consistency error. So uh, what do we do about it? So we need to delete this piece of data. Okay, delete this piece of data, and it should be set to seven seven three three. So this is the set function that helps us to set the pressures right. So we can do a similar thing for this uh, H2 fresh feed. So let's do the same. Let's do the same. Uh, we'll use the set function again. And instead of uh, you know clicking this and then you know select selecting the variables, we can actually use this. Uh, use the control press control and we bring it to set 2 control and we bring it down to the h2 fresh feed 
So we select the target variable as pressure. We press OK. So again, we need to delete this specified pressure to prevent it from being over specified. And we press the active button. And you see that all the pressures are now equalized. So let's rotate this around just to get the correct get the correct uh, orientation so it looks a lot neater. And now at the mixer, at the mixer, we have all the pressures equalized. So there is no backflow problem. So and the, the better way is to actually use this automatic pressure adjustment, set it to equalize all rather than set to outlet to lowest inlet so that this problem doesn't occur again. All right. So now let's hook this back to our system. And it's converged. So, uh, yeah, I mean, basically, that's uh, what we have to do. And the other thing we kind of want to sort out is this uh, reactor. It's at 20 segments now, and that's pretty okay. Uh, however, we can take a look, I think, at the conditions. You see that it is going uh, upward to about 290, which is, well, our operating temperature is about 280, and we want to keep it at 280 and below to prevent sintering of the catalyst. And if you don't want, if you don't mind the sintering, I mean, this is fine. Uh, but we want to bring the inlet temperature lower. So we will uh, kind of want to set this heat exchanger outlet temperature to be lower than 244, maybe about 235. And the other way of uh, you know getting getting this temperature lower than 290 is to increase the number of tubes so that the heat transfer is a lot better. So let's just do one thing at a time. First, we set this. Uh, Reactor reactants uh, temperature a lot lower. Maybe, maybe we set it at about. We want to decrease it by four degrees, so maybe we decrease this uh, to two two forty. So now let's do two forty. Let this uh, let high just uh, do some of the convergence. You can see the set function actually doing its job here, changing the gas recycle, uh, changing the pressures of the CO2 and the H2 fresh feeds according to the gas recycle. And now it's uh, converged, and both of the streams are blue, so that's alright. 250.6, which is somewhere near what we want. And yeah, that, that will help us to, you know. Um, reduce our maximum inlet uh, temperatures by a little bit. I can see uh, most of this uh, most of this uh, fixed bed reactor. I mean most of the heat is coming from the reaction of course. So now the top temperature is about 291. And of course there are two things we can do. We can reduce the inlet uh, temperature or we can uh, increase the heat transfer of this uh, fixed bit reactor. So let's just do that first. We try and increase the heat transfer efficiency. Okay. Okay, this thing should be close to 301. Let's just do that first. 302. So basically that should give us a better heat transfer. Okay, heat transfer calculation of the energy flow out. Wait for it to converge. Okay. The compressor duty is also about 500 kilowatts, which is pretty comfortable. Okay. Now I can see what's going on to see whether we need to manually adjust. 
So now you can see the CO2 uh, inlet is actually dropping. So to skip, again skip a few steps of the iteration, we can pause and we adjust the two recycle streams to reduce the amount of CO2. So the CO2 here is about 370, so let's reduce it again, 300. So we we'll skip a few iteration steps. So this is about 300. And press OK. Save the file and press Active. So we are doing that to skip a few iteration steps. Yeah. So let's take a look. Uh, it's still dropping again. 587 You can see the molar flow is steadily increasing. And now it's uh, converged. That's good news. 5439 kg mole per hour. So 575. 10% CO2. 10% CO2. That's pretty good. And how much methanol are we producing? 223. Okay, mass flow. 7166 kg per hour. Not too bad, so uh, that looks good. And let's check the heat transfer parameters 302, 301.7. That's pretty close. And we find that our stream, let's take a look at conditions. Ah, yeah. Well, less of it's at 290 now. Now, that's an improvement. So there are two things we can do. I mean, one thing we can do is just uh, increase the number of tubes again. We can double the number of tubes. All right. We're going to double the number of tubes to increase the heat transfer effectiveness. Let's pause this first. Double the, num the number of tubes, and we got to keep all these constant. 400 here. So I'm just going to estimate 400 to 500 kg mole per hour. It's active. So that will bring the temperatures down and generate more steam, which is always desirable. So again, this thing is increasing. Oh, now it's converged. So let's take a look at the heat transfer and compare it to the steam generation. 360.4. So let's go 360.4. Should not change too much. So now it's converged again. So we have a nicely converged file for this uh, simulation. Pressure drop 3.452 kilopascals. And let's take a look at the performance. Oh, now it's a lot better. You can see the temperature actually drops to 284. The highest temperature drops to 284. So that's pretty comfortable. I can safely say that this simulation is pretty, pretty good. Okay, so that's more or less it for, you know, having a first proper reactor system in ISIS. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video where we want to talk about maybe tweaking this system to maximize the yield of uh, steam and methanol. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next video. Bye-bye.